A Tuesday here in the nation's capital. Hello and welcome. It's great to have you with us today. A California teacher's opposition to having to pay union dues led to a lawsuit that is now a closely watched case before the United States Supreme Court. The justices who will decide the matter have just heard oral arguments and they have the case before them now. Their ruling will have a big impact, not just in regard to this, these 10 educators and the California Teachers Union, but for unions nationwide. Ken Jost was in court as the case was heard. He joins us now. He writes the Jost on Justice blog and has written extensively about the high court. Welcome back. Good to have you here. Glad to be with you. This is shaping up to be one of the more interesting and perhaps impactful cases that the justices will take on and decide this year, this term. Absolutely. This is a free speech case where money is at issue. Uh, the teachers who brought this uh, lawsuit in California uh, object to paying what the union calls fair share fees. They're not members of the union. They don't want to be members of the union. They don't want to pay union dues. But the union, under a California law, California law similar to laws in 23 other states, including Maryland, Virginia, and the District of Columbia, um, uh, says the uh, union can require non-union members to pay for the costs that the union incurs in representing them in the collective bargaining and grievance process. Um, and that's real money. That's uh, $900 a year, if I understand the record right. Um, and uh, these 10 teachers uh, uh, were recruited by a conservative outfit here, mm -hmm. the Center for Individual Rights, to challenge this. And they had the wind at their back because the Supreme Supreme Court, the conservative majority, has issued two decisions, one in 2012, one in 2014, saying that the 1977 precedent that allows this is not to their liking, shall we say, okay? Um, and that decision was closely divided, and it now appears uh, that the conservative majority has the votes and has the, has the will to overrule that precedent and, and say that unions in these agency shop fees, that's the le legal term of art, can't require non-union members to pay dues. The notion or the foundation uh, behind this uh, so-called fair share dues uh, structure is that the work that a union does to benefit uh, workers and to offer uh, representation and protections when there's a, an issue with management, what have you, that, um, that, that those benefits uh, extend broadly uh, to represented and unrepresented persons and that they don't come from the Easter Bunny, they come from, from someone, from some Everybody place. in the workplace. It's a fundamental principle of, of federal labor law that if the majority of workers at a, at, at a workplace vote for a union to represent them, the union has to represent everybody, everybody. And that's because employers don't want to have to negotiate with this union and that union and this union, okay? They want, they, want, they want a viable system for negotiating contract, uh, for handling grievances. They, they want you know, they want what the, what, what the law provides, exclusive representation by one union. Um, and the, this case doesn't affect, wouldn't affect private sector unions, uh, but what does affect public employee so unions. So this wouldn't, this wouldn't necessarily impact the Teamsters of the that's world. That's right. Wouldn't affect the Teamsters, wouldn't affect United Auto Workers, for, for instance, but would affect um, all of the teachers associations. So, okay, so the National Education Association's many affiliates. In California, that's 325,000 teachers. Okay, we, that's a lot of people. And in California, 10% of the teachers covered don't uh, opt out mm -hmm. of, 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 jo of joining the union. And so, uh, I, you know, I did back of, the, back of the envelope calculation. That sounds to me like $28 million at stake if all of the objectors mm -hmm. stop paying. And you might get some of the 90 to say, well, you know what, I could put that money to good use in my family or in savings or whatever. So you would, you would probably start with that 10% and probably the number would grow from there. As what, what, talk about uh, the, the free speech aspect of this case, the objection that some have to paying into a union that then in turn says things, does things, advocates for various positions that the people paying the freight object to. And it's like, why 
why is my money going for this? Uh, it, and, that is, and that is the point that Justice Kennedy, for one, made very, very forcefully during the arguments uh, in, uh, on Monday, during expanded arguments. Uh, the arguments are usually 60 minutes. As you know, th these were expanded to 80 minutes to allow the California Solicitor General, a lawyer for the union, and a lawyer for the Obama administration to argue on the union side, and the, the plaintiff's lawyer, a, a well-known conservative here in Washington, Michael Carvin, uh, had 40 minutes to present his, his side. And uh, in my reading, uh, the conservative justices agreed with everything that Michael Carvin had to say and disagreed with everything <laughs> the lawyers were arguing for the union uh, had to say. So uh, I, I think uh, there's just no doubt about the outcome, and any number of my Supreme Court press corps colleagues colleagues uh, wrote just the same. None of the coverage that I saw seemed to suggest uh, that this case was a mystery as to the eventual outcome. The die seems to be cast. And I know the court doesn't work this way, and they, cer they certainly wouldn't admit to working this way, but this, uh, I think conservatives feel as though they are overdue for a win, and this court seems poised to give them something that they have really wanted. Uh, for a very long time through this case. Um, uh, that's a good point. Last term, uh, in, in, you know, in, in the, in, in the la end of June and early July last year, everybody was saying, oh my, what a liberal term we had, okay? Not just gay marriage, but, it, but several other uh, important, important decisions, all won by the liberals. Not, not all, but, but, mm -hmm. uh, but it was a lib there was a liberal tilt last year. And um, yeah, the conservatives may be maybe pushing back, um, uh, but this one they set up uh, with the two prior decisions. Uh, in, in both of them, they said the, 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 this, this 1977 precedent was, was poorly reasoned, it was an anomaly, uh, we don't have to overrule it in this case, but if we got a case, we'd love to hear, we'd love to do that. Undoubtedly, the advocates for the status quo knew going in that this was a very uphill environment for them. What did they say? What was the best they could do? And, and did, did, the, did the liberals on the high court uh, offer any assistance were, were, in terms of their rhetoric and questioning? Did they, did they offer anything to kind of uh, uh, undergird the current uh, situation? Sure. sure. Ginsburg, Breyer, Sotomayor, and Kagan all sharply questioned uh, the lawyer for the plaintiffs, Michael Carvin. Um, uh, the two major points they made. One, it's a precedent, and, and it's worked. Um, uh, some people may disagree with it, but it, as, as Breyer put it, it's a compromise. Um, uh, the, the objecting non-union member doesn't have to pay for lobbying that the union engages in, just has to pay for the collective bargaining and grievance work that the union does. So, so the, not, the objecting non-union member doesn't have to pay union dues in full, just has to pay the cost of the benefits that he or she is receiving. So that's one thing. It's a compromise and it makes sense. And the second thing was free rider, uh, just as you said. If, uh, uh, why should these people get a benefit? Why should these objecting non-union members get the benefit of union services without paying? And uh, just quite simply, um, those arguments uh, were lost on the conservatives. To what extent is this shaping up to be a, a broad ruling that has impact uh, across many different unions, public sector unions, with, with many millions of dollars at stake in terms of uh, the money that uh, organized labor has to, to pursue its, its mission with? Yeah. So we're talking, we're talking really about three big categories of workers, teachers, police, firefighters. Uh, and those unions um, have... Uh, you know, in their lo individual local affiliates uh, have treasuries, and their treasuries uh, are at risk of being hurt. Uh, millions of dollars, uh, total aggregate, hundreds of million dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars nationwide, and um, and in effect, they will now, if the ruling goes the way we expect it to go, um, they will still have to represent these non-paying, objecting non-union members, um, so they will be 
Including well, like, individual grievance? Yes, uh, exactly wow. right. Wow. I mean, I mean if, if, if Rebecca Friedrichs thinks that she's been wrongly treated by her local school board. And she's the named plaintiff. She's the named, she's the named plaintiff. If she thinks, if she has a grievance, the California Teachers Association has to stand, has to be by her side representing her. Which her co-workers will have paid for and she will have put in not a penny under what we presume will be the new uh, the, new, the, the, new, the new arrangement where the, uh, the good is there and the, and the costs have been, the, the plug has been pulled on her financial support for that entity. That's the union's argument. That's on amazing. the other side, as Justice Kennedy put it at length in, in yesterday's argument, some teachers disagree with the union's position on merit pay, on education reform. Mm -hmm. and. They, the, the, their argument is my money is going to help yep. pay the union in its advocacy of an important public policy position with which I disagree and that they say is a First Amendment violation. It'll be fascinating to watch uh, the ruling that we expect this term. Is this one that will come at the end like so many do? Uh, th this is almost certain to be a 5-4 decision uh, and uh, will it come in May? or June? Yes. It could, it could come as early as May uh, because, because the battle lines were clearly drawn. A closely watched case before the U.S. Supreme Court. Ken, Ken Jost covers the uh, Supreme Court. He writes the Jost on Justice blog. Uh, it's always good having you here. Thanks very much for your time. Good to talk with you again. When we return, it's McAuliffe versus the Assembly as Virginia lawmakers return to Richmond.